Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the Chapter 6 Guided Problems. Um, I'm just going to kind of jump into these and do them for you. The first one involves finding the probabilities uh, for Z, uh, these are Z-scores given to us, um, which is nice because when we're given the Z-score, all we really have to do is use um, norm.s, that's the standard normal distribution, meaning it has a Z-score, um, dot dist. And then all we put is the z-score, 1.23 in this case, so I'm looking at A, and cumulative true. Now remember, when I do this, it's going to return for me the probability of any number less than 1.23. Um, so it, that, that could be misleading because right now we're looking for the probability that z is greater than 1.23. So this is the probability that z is less than 1.23. So if we take 1 minus this number, that will give us the probability that z is less than that. I'm sorry, greater than that. I'm going to, where is it? Sorry, when I have this shrunk down, I can't see all my tools. I'm going to take this down. Having some weird problems. Hold on. To four decimals, since that's what it's asking for. All right. So the probability that Z is greater than 1.23 is 0 0.1093. This one says, what's the probability that Z is greater than negative 0.33? So I'm just going to use the same thing, norm.s.dist, but here I'm going to say negative 0.33. And again, so this number here returns that that is the probability that it is less than, z is less than negative 0.33. So here is our probability that it is greater than negative 0.33. All right, so this one wants the probability that uh, z falls in between two numbers. So the way I deal with this one is I, I'll still use norm.s.dist. This number is negative 0.8. So right here is the probability um, that z is less than or equal to negative 0.8. And then I'm just going to copy this number, put it right over here. And I'm going to use paste special so I paste just the value. Then I'm going to do the same thing and find the probability that z is less than one, negative 1.74. And so now if I say the number that it is less than negative 0.8 minus the probability that it is less than negative 1.74, that gives me the probability that it falls in between the two, which is 0 0.1709. And here's another similar one. So the probability that it's between negative 1.73 and 0.19. So first, I'll figure out the probability that it is less than 0.19. I'll copy that, paste the value of it here. And then we'll figure out the probability that it is less than negative 1.73. And then we'll subtract, so this minus this. And that gives us the probability that it falls in between the two, 0.5335. And that is the end of problem number one. OK, so question number two uh, is very similar to the last one, except instead of having the z-score given to us, now we're, we're given a mean and a, a standard deviation for the distribution, uh, which is no problem, because we can use um, Instead of norm.s.dist, we're just going to do norm.dist, which means we don't have the z-score, which is the standard normal distribution. This is a, um, instead, this is just a normal probability distribution. So we want the probability, and so it asks us for x. So I'm going to use the highest. So it's asking, what is the probability that a randomly selected value from this population is between these two numbers? So I'm going to first find the probability of finding an x of 147. 
the mean of the distribution is given to us here as 128. The standard deviation of the distribution is given here as 25. And then cumulative is true. So remember, when I put this in, this is telling me the probability that the number is uh, that a randomly selected variable, or value, I should say, is 147 or less. So the probability of that is 0.7764. I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to paste the value of it here. And then I'm going to use the same distribution for the lower number, so 111. So that's the probability that a randomly selected value is 111 or less. So now, if I subtract the probability that it's 147 or less, I'm sorry, subtract the probability that it's 111 or less from the probability that it is 147 or less. That gives me the probability that it falls in between the two, which is 0 0.5281. And then the rest of these are just like it, so we just have to take the higher one, 168. I'm going to copy that, paste the value of it here and then find the probability of the lower one of, of, the, two, of the pair, 139. Since I already have it put into my calculator, this would be uh, the probability of it being 139 subtracted from the probability of it being 168, or 0.2752. All right, same idea, 99 and 73. Now, of course, I could set this up so that I just I have to, it's like a calculator, and all I have to do is change the variables, uh, and it would give me the answers. Uh, I feel like this is just as fast without setting up a whole calculator. Although if I knew I was going to have to take a test on this material, I might create my own calculators, which would really make my life easier on the test. So here it's 185. And then the second one is 122. The difference between the two is 0.5835. All right, that's it for question number two. OK, so question three is uh, similar again, but this is an exponential probability distribution as opposed to a normal distribution. Um, again, not a problem because we have Excel, so we just do expone.dist for an exponential distribution. And we're searching for an x. In this case, the x is 16. Lambda, remember, is 1 over the mean. So we have a mean of 7 minutes. So if we just say 1 divided by 7 for our lambda, and then the cumulative is true. So remember, this gives us the, the probability that um, x is less than 16. Uh, but because probabilities are somewhere between 0 and 1, we know if we do 1 minus the probability that it's less than 16 will give us the probability that it is greater than 16, which is what it's looking for here. Here it looks for the probability that x is greater than 2. So there's the probability that it's less than 2, and 1 minus that is the probability that it is greater than 2. Uh, now we have a couple where it wants the probability that it's between uh, two uh, different numbers, so the probability that x is between 7 and 14. So again, all we do is we take that upper limit. This is the probability that it is less than 7. I'm going to copy that and paste the value here, and then find the probability that it is less than, oh, did I say, what did I do? Did I do 7? Whoops, my mistake. So I'm going to do 14. So there's a probability that it is less than 14. I'm just going to delete this, even though I had it and we could have done it, but I'm going to go back and show you just my process. There's the probability that it is less than 7, which we already knew. 
the probability that it is less than 14, minus the probability that it is less than 7, gives us the probability that it's between 7 and 14, 0.2325. Then D is going to be similar. But it's, now they want the probability that it falls between 1 and 3, which is going to be a much lower probability, right? So there's the probability that it's less than 3. There's the probability that it is less than 1. So that so the probability that it is less than 3 minus the probability that it is less than 1 is the probability that it falls between the two of them, 2, 1, 5, 4. And that's it for number 3. OK, so uh, this is question 4, which is just like the last question, except they, trick, they got tricky. Um, because this one gives us the lambda, so we don't have to do 1 divided by the mean to find the lambda. Um, but it gives us a lambda in hours, 13 customers per hour. Then it asks us probabilities um, if in seconds and in minutes. So we've got to make sure that we're using the same units or we're going to get confused. So I'm just going to make a note here. So customers per hour. So our lambda is 13 customers per hour. So if I was going to convert that to customers per minute, I would just divide 13 per hour by 60, which means we would have 0.21667 customers per minute. And then I could convert that further if I wanted to, to customers per second. And that's going to be the customers per minute divided by 60. So this allows us now, when we go to do our calculations, to, to have the same units as what uh, the x we're looking for. So this says, what is the probability that the next customer will arrive within 45 seconds? So if I come up here and I use uh, expon.dist, exponential distribution, my x in this case will be 45 seconds. My lambda, because we're working in seconds, will be 0 0.00361, and cumulative is true. So this will return the probability that someone comes in the next 45 seconds or less, which is what it's asking us within the next 45 seconds. So that is 0 0.1500, or a 15% chance that that happens. The next one, it says, what's the probability that a customer comes in within the next one to five minutes. So now it's asking us a range, and we're in minutes instead of seconds. So I've got to come back up here, and I've got to check this. Instead of it being D18, which is in seconds, it's now going to be D17, which would be our lambda in minutes. And then for our X, it says one to five minutes. So I'm going to say in five minutes, there's our probability that it is five minutes or less. I'm going to copy that and paste its value here. And then I'm going to do a 1. And that will really return the probability that it is 1 minute or less. And then to find the difference that it falls in between the two, I'll take the probability of 5 minutes or less minus the probability of 1 minute or less. And then the same one, we're in minutes still. So all we have to do is find the probability that it is 7 or less. Copy that. Paste the value. And then the probability that it is 2 or less, and the difference between the two is 0.4289. And the last one, again, we're in minutes. So the probability that it is 19 minutes or less, when they're averaging 13 per hour, um, it's going to be pretty high, right? Yep, 0 0.9837. And then the probability that it is 6 or less. And so the difference between the two is 0 0.2562. And that's it. So problem fall, uh, 5 involves a, um, a um, continuous uniform distribution. 
um, and a continuous uniform distribution. Unfortunately, there is not an Excel function uh, for this, but they're really easy. Um, and so um, it's, a, it's a super easy formula uh, to find the probability of any range uh, in, in, a, in a continuous uniform distribution. We just follow a uh, formula, um, which is um, x2 minus x1, where x2 and x1 represent uh, the range of variables we're looking for divided by b minus a, which it, where b represents the the highest or largest allowable continuous random variable and a the lowest. So that sounds confusing, but it's not. And I'll, so I'll try to explain it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a little calculator for myself. Um, so I'm going to find a and b, and I'm going to find x1 and x2. So remember. A is the lowest number that could exist uh, in um, a set. So in this case, it's 50 because this uniform distribution only exists between 50 and 90. And 90 is the highest uh, things could be in this data set. Uh, and then, so now this trial tells us to find the probability that X is greater than 58. So that means that on the low end, x could be 58, and on the high end, it could be 90, because that's as high as the distribution can go. So now, to find the probability, we just uh, we just do what I, um, I'm sorry, I'm stuttering, uh, but we just uh, put in the formula that I just mentioned to you, which is x2 minus x1, x2 minus x1, divided by B minus A. So the probability that X is greater than 58 is 0.8. So the next one says, what's the probability that X is greater than 65? So our B and our, our A and our B don't change. It's still 50 to 90. That's as, as large or as wide as the distribution is. Uh, now we're saying our X1 is 65. So that's, we're looking for uh, and our x2 is 90. That's it. So the probability that x is greater than 65 is 0 0.625. The probability that x is greater than 84, right? Because our distribution, the lowest is 50, the highest is 90. And then the probability, the lowest is 84, the highest is 90, because the distribution doesn't go above 90. So our probability is 0.15. Here it says, what's the probability that x equals 59? This is a trick question. Remember, in all of these continuous probability distributions, um, because they're continuous, meaning there can be any number of, of decimal points, the probability of any one exact amount is always 0. So that's a trick question. Then it asks for the mean of the distribution. So the formula for the mean um, of a um, continuous uniform distribution uh, is simply uh, a plus b divided by 2. So this equals a plus b divided by 2. So our mean is 70. And the standard deviation formula is b minus a divided by the square root of 12. I don't know why the square root of 12, to be honest with you. There's probably some smart person who knows, but I'm not that smart person. So B minus A divided by the square root of 12, 11.54, two decimals, so 11.55. And that is it for question number five. One more to go. Uh, so question six is still continuous uniform distribution, so I left my little calculator up that I'd already created. I'm going to label it, though, I think, just to make it a little easier to follow. So this is our probability. This is our mean. And this is our standard deviation. All right, so here we have a random variable. Uh, it follows a continuous uniform distribution between 170 and 370. So our A is 170. And our B is 370. And 
um, I'll delete the x1 and x2 until we look at it. So now it wants to know the probability that uh, x is between 230 and 340. So all we do is plug in 230, 340, and there's our probability, 0.55. Now it wants the probability of that it's between 170 and 280. So our x1 is 170, our x2 is 280. Well, that's interesting. Came out to the same probability, 0.55. Uh, C wants the probability that x is greater than 210. So that means x1 is 210, and x2 is the upper limit of the distribution, which is 370. That gives us a probability of 0.8. The mean, it's already in here because we have the formula. We never changed it. So it did uh, A plus B divided by 2, which is 270. And the standard deviation we already have calculated as well um, because we had the formula in there. So when we put in the new A and B, it did B minus A divided by the square root of 12. Uh, which is 57.74. And that is the end of the whole guided problem. So good luck on the rest of the homework and good luck on the rest of the, well, on the rest of everything.